Welcome to today's lesson called Exponential Functions. Now during your investigation you should have discovered that exponential functions are functions that increase by the same percentage over equal increments in the domain. It basically means that there's a constant multiplier. Now your basic exponential function will look like this. f of x is equal to a times b to the x. The base has got to be some number greater than zero and notice that we'll find the variable in the exponent. Now we can find the formula for an exponential function if we have two points on our curve. It's easiest when one of those points is the y-intercept. So let's look at example one. Find the formula for an exponential function that passes through the points 0, 3, and 2, 12. So basically we have two points x, y and we're going to substitute them into our exponential function equation. So first I'm going to use my y-intercept and I'll replace f of x with 3 is equal to a times b raised to the zero. Well we know that any base raised to the zero power is equal to one so this tells us that a is equal to three. Now I'll substitute in 12 for f of x, three for my a, I'll leave b in for my base and I will raise this to the x or to two. When I divide both sides by three I get four is equal to b squared which means b is equal to plus or minus 2, but for us our base needs to be positive so b is equal to 2. So our equation is going to be f of x is equal to 3 times 2 to the x. In the guided worksheet we also looked at the compound interest formula which is how your money grows when you've invested it in the bank. So we know that a of t is equal to p times 1 plus r over n to the nt, where a is the account value at any point in time, t is measured in years, p is the starting amount of the account, which we call the principal, r is the annual percentage rate, expressed as a decimal, and n is the number of compounding periods in one year. And compounding just means how often is interest paid. We also want to talk about the number e. E represents the irrational number 1 plus 1 over n to the n. As n increases without bound or as n approaches infinity. This is a very special number that winds up being equal to approximately 2.718282. And we have a lot of applications for the number e, particularly in exponential growth and decay problems. So the last formula we want to look at right now is a of t is equal to p e to the r t. Sometimes we call that pert. This is when we are compounding continuously and p is the principal, r is the interest rate, and t is the number of years of the investment. Example two, how much will be yielded after one year when 1,000 is invested at 10 percent per year compounded annually, semi-annually, quarterly, daily, and continuously? So we are going to be using that a is equal to p times 1 plus r over n to the nt except for when we are doing continuously which is a equals p e to the rt. Now when we are compounding annually that means that n is equal to 1. So we are going to say then that a is equal to 1000 times 1 plus Remember, 10% needs to be written as a decimal, which is 0.1 divided by 1 to the 1 times 1. And when we put this in our calculator, we get $1,100. Second is when we are compounding semi-annually, which means n is equal to 2. So a equals 1,000, 1 plus 0.1 over 2 times 2 times 1 and this is equal to 11.02 and 50 cents. Our third scenario is compounding quarterly where n is equal to 4 so a equals 1000 1 plus 0.1 divided by 4 raised to the 4 times 1 and this is equal to 11.03 and 81 cents. Next we want to calculate this when we're compounding daily. That means that n would be equal to 365 
So A equals 1,000, 1 plus 0.1 over 365 to the 365 times 1. And this is going to be equal to 1105 and 16 cents. And then finally we're going to do continuously where it basically means that N is equal to infinity. So now we'll be using the formula A equals PE to the RT. So A will equal 1000 E to our rate which is 0.1 times our time which is one year. And we'll put this in our calculator. Now E is a special number just like pi so you should be able to find E and e to the x on your calculator and once we plug this in we get 1105 and 17 cents. So as you can see as we increase the number of times per year that we compound interest the more interest you will make. Sometimes we want to know how much money do we invest now to get a future value of money later and in example three we're going to be talking about a bond and a bond is a savings instrument where you buy a bond that has a certain face value but it won't reach that face value until a certain number of years. So example three says a bond can be redeemed in 10 years for $1,000. How much should you pay if you want a return of 8% compounded monthly? So we are going to say that our final amount will be $1,000. What we want to find is our principal, our or our initial investment. And then we're going to have 1 plus, now 8% as a decimal is 0 0.08. We're compounding monthly where n is equal to 12. And we're going to raise that to the n, which is 12, times the number of years, which is 10 years. Now if we simplify this, we get that this is p times 2.21964. And if we divide both sides by 2.21964, we get that P is equal to $450.52. Now we don't just use exponential growth and decay for financial models. We also use this for any kind of growth or decay. So our general formula is A of T is equal to A E to the RT where A is the initial value. Sometimes it's written as A of 0 or A sub 0. R is the growth rate per unit time and T is the amount of time. Now when R is greater than 0 we're talking about growth. When R is less than 0 then it is decay. Example 4 Rate on 222 decays at a continuous rate of 17.3% per day. How much will 100 milligrams of rate on 222 decay to in three days? So we know that our initial value is 100 milligrams. We know that T is equal to three days. And our, we, they've given us our R. Now we need to write that as a percentage, but it says it's decaying. So we can't use positive 17.3%. We actually have to say that this is going to be negative 0.173. So we'll say then that A after three days is equal to our initial value 100 E to the negative 0.173 times 3. And after three days we will decay to 59.5 grams. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.